the Mali government officials and regional leaders have been holding a three-day conference to try to resolve an election deadlock. They have a tight deadline because on Monday, February the 8th, President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed's mandate expires. The impasse began when the federal state of Jubaland and the semi-autonomous region of Puntland refused to sign a pact introducing a new electoral model. The major difference between the proposed model and the existing one is an increase in the number of delegates who will elect MPs in the lower house. So let's take a look back at what led to this stalemate and what could go wrong if they fail to reach an agreement. See, in Somalia, clans elect senators and MPs who then choose a president. But elections have been delayed twice because of disagreement between the government in Mogadishu and semi-autonomous regional states. President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed's mandate expires on February the 8th, but there is no parliament or legislature to elect his successor. Now, this isn't the first time Somalia has delayed elections. It happened in 2012 and 2016. But this time, political observers fear a constitutional crisis due to the mistrust between President Mohammed's government, regional leaders, and opposition groups. We have Professor Abdi Samata, a Somali scholar and writer. He, we have him back on the show. He joins me from Mogadishu. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us on Africa Matters. The president's mandate ends on Monday. What happens if the Somali government fails to agree on when and how elections should be held? The two upper houses of parliament, the two houses of parliament have passed the law which the president signed, uh, stipulating that parliament will stay in place until a new president is elected. So that will be the uh, political insurance, if you like, that will maintain stability in the country for now at least. So, well, Somalia extended elections in 2012 and 2016 without any severe political fallout. What's the difference this time? And why do many Somalians think rescheduling this election could lead to a constitutional crisis? Uh, there are two reasons for this. Uh, one is the fact that the new president and his government over the last four years have made absolutely no progress in the constitutional matters they were supposed to do, uh, such as creating a robust election commission, increasing security in and around Modisho and the towns and villages around the country, and so on and so forth. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the federal government, and particularly the president, is trying to gerrymander the election such that they will be assured to come back to the presidency and stay for another four years. The opposition leaders, mem senior members of parliament and the public are opposed to that, and that's created a great deal of tension both in Mogadishu and outside. Well, but the, the government had planned to, re uh, to introduce a one-man, a one-vote election, but then later changed course on that decision. How will a direct voting system benefit Somalia's democracy? Well, you know, Somalia, first of all, we need to know, our audience needs to know that this was the first democracy in the African continent, where a series of elections took place in the 1960s, when the rest of the continent was suffering under military coups and regimes. So there's a great deal of precedent. The president made a presumptuous assessment that there will be one person, one vote in this election. But Al-Shabaab, the terrorist group, controls the vast majority of the country, something like 85 percent. So that was an illusion. So going back to stability and rebuilding the infrastructure and security forces so that there will be expansion in the areas that are secure is really the key thing that he should have done, and he miserably failed in that. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Abdi Sabata, a Somali scholar and writer. He's been talking to us about our lead story here on Africa Matters, which is the election deadlock in Somalia.